<clears throat> I wanted to put a tutorial together um, to go into creating loops in GarageBand based on synchronized echo techniques or augmented using synchronized echo techniques. An essential building block of many contemporary styles of music is a good groove. Here I'm going to build up an example of that. I'm going to begin with a very simple drum beat. To that end, I have GarageBand up with a blank workspace. First thing that we're going to do is set the tempo to the same tempo that I recorded a drum beat earlier to, and that is 85 beats per minute. I'm going to create a track. It's going to be a real instrument track because this is a recorded loop. And then I'll drag the loop in. I'll set the repeat and we'll listen to what it sounds like uh, with no processing. Okay, that's pretty dry. The first effect that I'm going to um, put in here, and it's the essential effect to this tutorial, is a synchronized echo, or as GarageBand calls it, a track echo. The really important thing about the track echo is to pick the right interval. When working with echo effects, using sparse samples is important. I'll be using various techniques to limit the temporal and sonic overlap in this process. What that means will become clear to you in a few minutes. This will keep the finished process, product from getting muddy and keep it clear and articulated. So let's hear what this, um, this sounds like right now. Now you can kind of get the idea of what's starting to happen here, that, that syncopation is coming in. But since this was a recorded sample, it's not spot on in time. When you're going to use synchronized echo effects, being locked into the time signature that you're playing in is absolutely essential. Fortunately, GarageBand has this neat little thing down here called enhanced timing. And when I turn that up, you're going to hear a very different product. You see how that tightened it up? And now those little in-between rhythms really bring out a swing. Now that sounds a lot better. But there's still something a little bit weak. It needs some bass punch. Now to do this, what I'm going to do is, and there's a lot of effects that do this automatically. I'm going to do it by hand here in GarageBand. I'm going to cut out the low frequencies of this sample. I'm going to copy it to another track. And I'm going to have only the low frequencies there. What I'm going to use to do that are low pass and high pass filters. And they do exactly what they say. The low pass filter passes through the lows and the high pass filter passes through the highs and you pick the cutoff point and the strength of the effect. So first let's duplicate this track. I'm going to copy this sample. and paste it in. Now on this track, like I said, I'm going to pass through all the highs. So I'll go for the high pass filter. <clears throat> 